Welcome to The Fight with Teddy Atlas, presented by Dynamic Striking. I'm Ken Rideout, joined as always by the voice of all combat sports, the legend Teddy Atlas. Teddy, how you doing? Good, Ken. We just finished a really good interview with Sean O'Malley right off the top. Just want to let off people know, our fans know. You can look forward to seeing that here on Thursday. I believe we'll put it up on Thursday. And, um... You know, you saw the electricity in Boston Garden. You were there. I was there um, calling, uh, talking about the fights afterwards with all the UFC people with ESPN. And you saw not only the electric atmosphere, which not every fighter gets, but the superstars get it. And you saw that, and you saw the electric performance that, you know, went along with it. Uh, he did it just the way that a future superstar or a budding superstar, the heir to the throne of Conor McGregor, if you will, should do it and would do it in spectacular fashion. I mean, he brought the curtain down. You know, he's that star that goes out on Broadway and it's going to be the next star and you bring the curtain down. And that's what he did. And there's always something behind the star that, you know doesn't have to glitter quite as much as the talent, the promotional stuff that goes along with it, you know, the way that he can talk, the things that are said. There's substance. There's And, and there's a quiet greatness behind the loud greatness, if that's the proper way to say it. And I think if you watch the interview Thursday, you'll be able to see some of the some of that quiet greatness um, that goes in to making a guy that is potentially the next superstar. There's, there's so many great fighters in the UFC, so many of them, and so many deserving. They're, I mean, they're samurai, they're warriors, but there are only a few that, again, sort of you know, carry that torch of the next pay-per-view great. You know, if that puts it in proper perspective. Uh, the guy that's not only good in the octagon, but that draws the masses because he's got the X factor. He's got all the other stuff that goes with it. And um, he's a guy that has that. And the more importantly than me knowing it and the fans knowing it, the guy that runs things up there in... Uh, at the UFC, a guy named Dana White, he knows it. <laughs> and, there, you know, obviously you're going to see him put into position, I think, from the way everything has unfolded so far to carry that torch of Conor McGregor and, you know, and, and of course all the other great ones uh, that are out there. So I just wanted to give that little strong promotion off the top Thursday to look for that interview. I was up in Bristol, Connecticut uh, at ESPN Studios this weekend working with Rashad Evans, Din Thomas, Phil Murphy, all great guys to work with, uh, you know, doing the ESPN uh, pre-fight and post-fight for, for that big show. Of course, we had a big upset. Adesanya gets upset by Strickland. But I was up there working with these and again just just good guys to work with and um i just before we get into it and i let you sort of set the table what an upset obviously that was and it's reminiscent of at least in the world of mma ufc in particular ronda rousey getting beat by holly holmes it was not quite you know in my world in boxing well, it might be the greatest upset in sports of all time. It, it doesn't quite go to that level of Buster Douglas, Mike Tyson. Um, but perhaps it was... Biz being over rock holes. Yeah. But, There's a bunch of them in the UFC uh, when uh, the Spider lost to a Chris Weidman. But I think it's Some equivalent ones, in my sport, in boxing, to for a couple of reasons more equivalent to Andy Ruiz because everyone was trying to figure yeah. out 
Wow, where does this fit as far as <laughs> in the pantheon of upsets? Where does it fit? And for me, Andy Ruiz, Ruiz upsetting Joshua. Uh, similarity. That's a perfect you know? one. And That's right on the screws. That's a perfect description. Yeah, because there's similarities in other ways, too. Because Strickland wasn't originally supposed to be the opponent with Adesanya. It was supposed to beat Duplessis, who, who had just beat Whitaker in a... Also a very big upset. And just like it wasn't supposed to be Ruiz with Joshua, but Jarrell Miller failed the drug test and Ruiz stepped in to fight Joshua. So comparable, definitely comparable uh, for all those reasons. I think that that one... And both, of the and both the opponents on paper were kind of dismissed. I think even we discussed it like, yeah, this is a one-sided, this is going to be a walkover. And the opponent had something else in mind. Yeah, I mean... But same vibes. I picked going in like a few people, but I picked uh, I, I picked Adesanya to win. But I also, we, we had a really good breakdown. I think the clip was up there. It's probably still up. Of how I pointed out that, and no doubt, I thought Strickland would win. <laughs> but I mean, um, not Strickland, um... I thought Adesanya would win it. Adesanya. But, yeah, we all did. But I, I in the clip, that when we talked about the in the pre-fight, and I thought we had a pretty good breakdown of it, and, and as I said, it, I think the clip was put up by Rob, where it got a lot of views. I was talking about where Strickland was much more cerebral. We know how cerebral Adesanya is, how talented he is, how he creates his own music how he's one of those phenomenal, you know, not come every day kind of a talents. But I also talked about how Strickland was much more cerebral than people thought he was. Um, much more to him that first meets the eye, you know. And and I I remember thinking when he was saying all that nutty stuff, you know, I, I really remember it was just, about a week before the fight, I said to myself, maybe crazy like a fox. And you know what? He was crazy like a fox. And I'm not being a Monday morning quarterback where it's easy to tell you who was going to win on Sunday. I already told you. I thought Adesanya was going to win. <laughs> but I did think those things before the fight. Like, there's more to him that meets the eye. And it also, we'll get into it later, it's a reminder that you can have all the great talent in the world. A, you got to be mentally right. And, and B, there's also something to be said for the quiet talent. You know, he doesn't match Adesanya, he being Strickland, with the kind of, you know, genetic talent, just explosive talent neon talent that he has but he's got he's very solid technically he's buttoned up he uses the jab he does things in a very conventional responsible manner unlike he used to do maybe some years ago he's made a transition where he's not that caveman anymore and that, I did talk about that before the fight with all those great UFC people up at ESPN, where he's not that caveman. We're walking around with a torch. He's got a flashlight now, you know, where he's 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 not as reckless. That that worked for him early on. It got him wins. It also got attention for him. But now he's much more cerebral. Now he's much more responsible. Now he's much more buttoned up. Now he's much more traditional boxer. Where he comes in, nothing fancy, very simple, comes in behind the jab, as I always say, sets the table with the jab, eats with the right hand, <laughs> doesn't make mistakes, doesn't help you beat him. There's something to be said for that talent. What talent am I talking about? Being reliable, being consistent, being steady, being, you know, being technically sound. There's something to be said for those abilities being obviously mentally durable, where he showed that, consistent on a mental, where he didn't fall apart mentally, where he didn't get 
over-anxious. He stayed patient. He has made a transition, and he made it before that night. And I don't think any of us appreciated what a transition he had made. I think he snuck up on us. And not only what a transition he made, but how, again, how weighty, how meaningful, how powerful just being buttoned up technically, mentally, you know, reliable, steady, consistent, that those are talents. Those are elements of ability that we don't always weigh in on as being as heavy as the more obvious talents of speed, explosiveness, power. You know, those are more obvious. And we put so much credence on those that we forget about the other ones. And he reminded us of that. I, he reminded me of it, of how you could take a fighter who's not as fast, not as athletic, not as good, but if you make him good technically and reliable and steady, he's got a good chance to to pull off a win that some people don't think he can pull. Now, having said that, there's always X factors floating in the air where Izzy didn't look the same as he, where he looked off. A lot of that's got to do with Strickland. We shouldn't take credit away from him. But I'm sure that there was other stuff there too where he wasn't quite himself. And before we go on, I'll say what my thoughts are on that because I think right off the top people are here to hear about the Izzy fight and, and how he lost. And so I'm going to get right to it. My son has talked about this the scouting in the NFL. Teddy Atlas the third. He, I've seen it. I've seen it in my business, in boxing. I've seen it in combat sports. Where there's an emotional letdown. Now look, you're a pro. You still got to go in there and do it. No excuse. I get it. But we are, they are human. They're not machines. And my son would talk about it in football in his profession, where he would say, Dad, I think this team, whether it's Alabama, whether it was Clemson, whether it was, you know, Ohio State, whether it was, you know, Oklahoma at the time, whoever, one of the big dogs, one of the big talented dogs, Georgia, whoever, where he would say, I think they might have trouble this week. And I'd be like, why would they have trouble? They're so much better you know, definitely on paper, but they're so much better than this other team. It's a drop-off. He said, yeah, but they had a very emotional game the week before where they won a game that they weren't expected to win. And and they they did it in dramatic fashion. And now he would call the next game. He said, I think they're in a sandwich game. I think they're in a sandwich game where you caught in between the next game with a lower level opponent, supposedly, where emotionally you can't be at the place you need to be and that you had just been at. I think some of that might have happened without his time. No excuses. Strickland deserves his champ for a reason. He went in there ready and he performed. But I like to examine everything for the fans out there. And I think some of that might have been at play. I've seen it where a fighter will pull off a huge upset and then he'll fight a lesser fighter where it's supposed to be a walk in the park and it's not a walk in the park. And the same things. Yeah, you got to be physically ready, but you also have to be emotionally and mentally ready. And they are human. You know, they don't drink oil. You know, they drink water and whatever else. They are not machines. So... I think that some of that, I think some of that was at play or possibly at play. At the end of the day, it doesn't matter. Um, Strickland is the champ, and that's all that does matter right now. But I just wanted to give that sort of, uh, you know, view of the whole thing. Uh, and again, Strickland had a, I talk about it all the time, knowing what, being prepared, and whatever you do, you want to be great. 
be prepared, do your homework. He was prepared. He had a great fight plan, and he executed it perfectly. Um, so he deserves nothing but appreciation from everybody, uh, uh, just accolades uh, from me and everybody else for pulling off the upset and in a dominant fashion. So I just, I thought that was a good way to just let the people say or know that, yeah, we're going to satisfy you today. We are going to be on what you want us to be on, which is the concentration of that fight, that main, you know, upset. Um, but we're going to also cover, as we always do, the entirety of the night, or we try to do. So take it from there, Ken. Sure. On the main card, City Kickboxing gets the action started with a big bang. In the light heavyweight division, Tyson Pedro knocked Anton Turkaj into the uh, shadow realm, just blitzed him, knocked him out quick and easy. Um, man, that guy is big and strong, Tyson Pedro, and there was some pretty good trash talk. And from the uh, side of Anton, um, Tyson, not much of a trash talker, but did all his talking with the fists and uh, blasted the Swede uh, right back to Sweden. How'd you like that one? Yeah. First of all, that for these undercard fights, I'm going to go shotgun style. I'm going to rifle through them. Uh, maybe it was a foreshadowing of things to come because I tweeted that Pedro did it the way that Strickland likes to. He set the table with the jab and he ate with the right hand. And that was it. That was bang. He finished everything on his plate, you know, I also talk about someone being, you know, not wasting anything. He finished everything on his plate, um, as any grandmother would love, and been proud. And in boxing, we use a hook to the body to put water in the basement that I like to talk about, you know, to the body. Well, in MMA, Pedro showed you what they do. He used a leg kick to the body to put a little flood in the basement, too, to help his cause. Next. Next up, we have another Aussie getting it done with Justin Taffa. Knocks out the big guy, Austin Lane, in the heavyweight division. Austin Lane, interestingly enough, product of Murray State. Uh, a defensive end drafted in the fifth round by Jacksonville Jaguars. He spent time with Kansas City, Detroit, Chicago. This kid is an athlete. Um, not much trash talking from either guy. They were both all business, but uh, Taffa much more on the business end, took care of business and blasted um, Murray out of there, 122 of the first round. I was hoping to see some rounds in this one. I always like when guys transition from uh, one sport to another and, you know, defensive end there's some there's some positions in football where you can kind of slip through the cracks without being the toughest guy in the world uh kickers quarterback i mean you know they have to be tough obviously but they're not linebackers defensive end those are the positions where you're getting cracked in the mouth on every single play so i always like seeing these guys transition justin taffa was having none of it blasted him first round how'd you like that one and the hits keep on coming <laughs> I always say that uh, the Samoan athletes and athletes from that part of the world, you know, whether in boxing or football, my son always told me about this too, or MMA, that they're thick-boned, they have natural power, not from the weight room, like talk about football, maybe you get it from the weight room um, sometimes, you know, which is great, but natural and their bodies defy what you'd expect to see no adonis bodies you know nothing chiseled out of stone and muscle <laughs> quite frankly soft looking bodies you wouldn't use his body on promoting a product of protein shakes right or, or you know charles atlas or you know jenny craig ain't giving him a commercial okay they're, they're, they're not giving him an endorsement i'm sorry 
Well, maybe they would before, <laughs> not an after one. And athletic greens, I don't know. He could use some athletic greens. I know that's, I know that that's going to be coming as soon as I finish this, and it should be coming. No, 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 <laughs> it should be coming. It should be because, uh, you know, athletic greens, uh, they make up. Well, spe- speaking of which, if you're going to do a weight cut and some of these guys at heavyweight have to cut to get to 265, if you are going to skip meals, I can think of nothing better to supplement a fasting diet or a weight cut than Athletic Greens. Go to athleticgreens.com slash atlas and we'll send you 10 free travel packs with your first purchase. So when you're going to Australia and you're cutting weight, when you're on the road, you get the exact perfectly measured dose per serving. Athletic Greens made from 75 whole food sourced ingredients. I know it sounds like I'm saying this in jest, but I'm not kidding. Anytime I'm on the run and I think I'm not going to get enough calories for the day, at the very minimum, I want to get all the nutrients that are contained in the food. And all this stuff, all the powder in this bag of Athletic Greens is derived from whole food sources. There's no chemicals, no BS in here. One scoop in the morning, get you good to go, get all the vitamins and minerals you you need. If you're only taking one supplement, make it Athletic Greens. Greens. Go to athleticgreens.com slash Alice. 10 free travel packs just for our listeners. And it might... Sorry about that, Teddy. No, no, I set you up, so there's nothing to be sorry about. I know... Didn't mean to interrupt I, No, the I flow. set it up, though. I, I, I put it on a dish mm-hmm. for you, um, right on a platter for you, <laughs> on a tee, if you will. Like a good stiff like jab. A, well, I put it on the tee for, you know, I like... I know you like to play tee ball. I put it right on the tee for you, so you, <laughs> you could be a 300 hitter. Um, listen... <laughs> well, 300 with a T I'm doing pretty yeah, good well no hopefully <laughs> hopefully a little higher um, 500 <laughs> but if as far as athletic greens I will say this in all kidding aside if you want to try to chisel that body a little bit more and cut out uh, certain things and as Ken said properly uh, supplement what you need to get with what you're not any longer getting or what you might not have time to get depending on your schedule athletic greens uh there's no doubt about it there's a reason why it's called athletic it's i mean it could be good for anybody but it does give the body that is on the go that is needing extra stuff it gives it to you um and it gives it to you in a simple way and in an easy way but to finish the point i was making talking about bodies that might not be, um, they might be taking athletic greens. You could still be taking it and giving yourself the nutrients you need. But the ones that don't, that, put it this way, they're not going to do the sequel of The Terminator with Arnold Schwarzenegger. Um, those don't get fooled. You get fooled by those bodies. And in this case, Tough is a perfect example of that, where, you know, uh, they they defy, as I said earlier, what you would expect to see with a powerful guy, but they have that natural power. A boxing guy that was from New Zealand, from that part of the world, David Tua. Do you remember him, Ken? Uh, from of course. He, I mean, that guy had he didn't have an Adonis body, but he had great power, spectacular power almost along the lines of how I brag and give credit uh, to Wilder for having power in that right hand. David Tua had power in that left hook. Incredible. Um, And so does Taffer. And I'll finish with punches are born. They're not made. Uh, Another one-round KO. As I said, we started off hot out of the box with that main card. The hits just kept coming next next up we have manel cape uh against a last minute opponent he was supposed to fight kai kara france this one i was really looking forward to uh manel cape to say the least can talk trash uh i don't know if you saw it or if anyone who hasn't at the press conference he started stood up and started screaming at kai kara france who happened to be at the press conference because again fights in australia it's a huge homecoming fight for city kickboxing all their guys were in action and uh kai kara france was there supporting his guys he had to pull out of the fight had an injury and man 
Cardell Capes stood up, started screaming at him. And and one thing about those city kickboxing guys, if you want one, you're getting all. And uh, Izzy stood right up and uh, defended Kai Carver. I love Izzy. Of course, forever. I knew you like that. I love family. I love loyalty. I think we. I'm not alone with that. But yep. I I just love. Uh, Family. I love people, you know, and you don't have to be connected with blood. I just love that people uh, stand up and stick together. Uh, and I'm not talking about you go and you beat up the guy together. I'm just talking about, as you just pointed out, of course. That, they're, that they're with their guy and, you know, they're loyal to their guy. I I mean, I, I think that speaks to somebody's character um, below the surface below the skin uh, where you know a little bit more about the person. And that's one of the reasons why I love Izzy but, and, and a lot of those guys. Um, but anyway, as far as um, we're pronouncing it Cape, right? Cape? Yeah, yeah. What I was gonna, what I was just gonna finish with saying is that he got a last minute uh, opponent, Felipe Dos Santos, who came off the Contender Series, uh, six and zero as a pro. Um, looked on paper like a one-sided walkover for Cape, but ended up being a much more difficult fight than probably anyone anticipated. He gets a unanimous decision, but. Uh, this was a good fight. I mean, I guarantee you Cape wasn't expecting this kind of action from Dos Santos. I thought those handles handled the moment really well because this kid Cape hyped this fight up so much. Everyone was paying attention, including me, because even when Izzy stood up to defend Kai Kara France, you could see that Cape was sincere about his aggressiveness. He didn't back down. He was like ready. He was ready to fight everybody. And uh, it looked like that. He then takes the mic after a fight and shoots himself in the foot by using homophobic slurs. I don't understand why you would do that to yourself like I, I don't understand like why would you say things that's, that you know you know that's offend? on you I don't get it but it's also would help if they just had better people to kind of what am I looking for just like a kid needs a parent guidance uh, proper guidance they need guidance just, just where a kid needs a parent for obvious reasons you know uh, during their life you need guidance you need direction you, you just you know, need people that can tell you things that some people that just want to make money around you won't tell you because they just want to make money around you and they don't want to upset you. They don't want and, you to get rid of them. And yeah, they want to. Their job is to stay there rather than to help make you better in areas. And a parent, a friend, a exactly. real friend, job is only one thing: to make you better, to tell you things that could hurt you, to to make sure that you don't, sh as you say, shoot yourself in the foot, that you don't do or say things that are detrimental to your growth, you know, to your future. And so, yeah, it's on the person, don't get me wrong, but you just wish that they had people around them. Maybe they do and they don't listen. Maybe I'm being wrong about that. But in general, I just wish that these guys had more than just guys that are there because they're getting paid and they're part of the entourage. And some do, but not all of them. They don't know. I don't know if he does or doesn't. But where you yeah. got guys that aren't just caring about the paycheck, they're caring about the person, they're caring about telling them, even if it upsets them, what they should hear. But anyway, getting to the fight. Cape Dos Santos. Here's how I saw it. A star. I was watching a star. Forget about the other stuff. I'm talking about just in the ring, in the octagon, in the cage. I was watching a star, a special talent in Cape. And it's not like, as you touched on, that he was in there with an easy touch. First of all, there's no easy touches in the UFC. We understand that. He was in with a monster. That might be another future star. That's really, I mean, that he took this fight and put this kind of performance. First of all, it was the fight of the night. It was it was that good. And that those Santos took that guy and fought the kind of fight that he fought. He can be a he can be sensational too. But right now, and and like I said, Dos Santos is a monster. But Cape is I, I was watching something really special. Um and he needed to be to win this fight with Dos Santos, as it turned out. That's how good Dos Santos is. Uh, great fight. And once again, you know, in the UFC, great matchmaking. I have to say that. 
Um, Cape was truly tested. He showed that he's he's for real. Um, you know, he's more than just as you said, all bark and and talk with that other stuff that we'd rather not hear. But the guy can fight, and he behaves in a ring like a fighter, and he thinks like a fighter. Um, again, he showed he's real because Santos is that tremendous. Cape reminded me of a young Manny Pacquiao. The way that he used his legs to close distance and gap so fast, so explosively, and then exploded with his power, with his punches inside with those strikes. Uh, he's an explosive, well-rounded, smart fighter. As I said, great fight. I want to keep seeing. I don't want, maybe I don't want to keep hearing him, but I definitely want to keep seeing <laughs> Cape. Uh, and, and for that matter, I want to keep seeing Dos Santos. Both guys did everything. Cape not only closed those gaps fast, but the way he counted his timing, his instincts, you know, the quickness, the power, everything, but the way he counted was tremendous. Just great match. And as I said, uh, nothing but kudos to both fighters and to the matchmakers. Yeah. The last thing I wanted to say about that, though, with, with regards to how you talk on the mic is if you're a young fighter and you listen to us right now, please put yourself in the UFC's position. If you go out there and dominate and look spectacular, it's easy for them to get behind you and stop promoting the crap out of you. The minute you start using racial or homophobic slurs, you put the company in a difficult position. How can they promote that? It, it, so when people pull that clip of you using those words, it, it, it's just dumb. It doesn't help your cause. Use your brain. If you don't have anything productive to say, just maybe say, I got nothing else to say. I do my fighting with my fists if that's the way you're going to talk. And believe me, we're no like, we're not trying to promote woke ideology over here. I'm just saying common no, sense. No, no, it's got nothing to do anyway. with that. Woke, you go broke. You exactly. Know, uh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> I mean... Uh, or we saw something, uh, I forget what it was, somewhere where there was some example of that. And basically it turned out... A Bud Light? Uh, I think, yeah, you, you, you go woke, you get yoked. Um, <laughs> Here, I got, a, I got a good example for you. Remember when they told Djokovic he couldn't come into the country in Australia? He missed the Australian Open. Then he missed the U.S. Open because he wouldn't get the shot. Which, you know, in hindsight, maybe he looks like the smart one there. I did get vaccinated, but... I digress. Uh, he comes back and wins the U.S. Open. And Teddy, one of the promotions, it, literally you couldn't make it up. It was like a Saturday Night Live skit. They're showing Djokovic. And then they go, and here's the Moderna shot of the day. And, and it's Djokovic scoring the winning point to win the U.S. Open. They literally tried to destroy the guy for exercising his right to choice. But again, don't want to get into a vaccine debate. But that was just an interesting um Interesting twist of irony there that he gets the Moderna shot of the day at the U.S. Open when being banned from the tournament for not taking the shot. Um, let's jump into the co-main. Tai Tuivasa, uh, always a crowd favorite at the UFC. Homecoming fight. I was pumped to see him. He always brings the. He always brings excitement. Matter of fact, he jumped up between Cape and. Um, and now he's and got Adesanya hair. Did press you know he's got hair? He's got like. <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah, like yeah. You. He had his. He had his hair going. He had the whole, um, at the press conference, he had the whole um, Islander uh, decor or dress code. Uh, he looked great. Uh, in tough against Alexander Volkov. And, you know, with Tai Tuivasa, I think of him along the lines of a Derek Lewis. He's just going to throw big shots. He can take a ton yeah, of shots. Comparison. And he's going to hope he catches either you. Either he gets you. And unfortunately. He either gets you or you get him. That's a good comparison. That's right. Yeah, and Volkov is just too well-rounded for that. If you don't catch him, the problem is he mounts you and puts you in an Ezekiel choke, which you very rarely see people get choked out from that. It's a super hot, highly technical jiu-jitsu move, hard to get, hard to submit someone with, but when you got a guy 265 pounds putting that squeeze on your neck and you're not proficient, super proficient in jiu-jitsu is just nothing you can do. Chokes him out with an Ezekiel in the second round. How'd you like it while it lasted? I love the way you'd say Ezekiel, or whatever that is. I love that. Uh, <laughs> is, is, Ezekiel. Ezekiel. I, I love it. I <laughs> I I think of it as the sauce that you that you put on um uh what do you call them uh gyros 
Oh, you're thinking of tzatziki? Yeah, I, I was thinking of sauce for the gyros. I love that sauce, that white this sauce. This is I, Ezekiel. Yeah. Ezekiel yeah, with yeah, an yeah. E. Thank you for, for, for <laughs> clearing that up. I only know because my son Cameron, after every submission, will be like, Dad, what was that move? And then I have to Google it on YouTube and we watch it together. The last one we looked up was the Twister. So we now we got the Twister and the Ezekiel added to our arsenal of um, yeah. submissions. And the gyro, if you go by the, the Teddy Atlas. <laughs> um, Vol Volkov <laughs> had tremendous height and reach advantage, right? Um, but more importantly, and I always would talk about this, Ken, he knew how to use it. He knew how to fight tall. Um, not everyone does. Uh, remember that fighter, what was his name in boxing that was undefeated? And I, I knew that sooner or later he was going to get knocked out. And I said it. Uh, Fontara. Remember Fontara? He was undefeated for... Oh, uh, Fon 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 Fontana, right? Uh, uh, Sebastian Fondora. Yeah. Fontana or Fondora? Fon Fondora. See, this, it's... And boxing, very Sebastian tall, like Fundor. six foot. He was like a freaking junior middleweight that was like six six. Um, Fundora, yeah. Sebastian Fundora. And, and I knew he was uh, going to get knocked out because he didn't. He was tall, but he didn't know how to fight tall. He fought short, and I said sooner or later, six six. Sooner or later, he's going to be like a tall building. He's going to get windows broke. That's right. You know, and because yep. really, you stand there like a tall building, and a short guy gets close to you, he's going to break windows. Yeah, you, you know, you got. It's one thing to be on the outside, you have the edge, but when they get close, you got a problem. Now you got a disadvantage because being taller gives a lot of surface, a lot of target to the shorter guy. And so you got to know how to fight tall. You got to know how to use those physical assets as an asset. And otherwise, it's not a physical asset. So Volkov knows how to use it. That's that's what I had to say. Um, he made the shorter... Tavasa go through, as I often say, a bad neighborhood to get to him, and he mugged him on the way in. And uh, his straight hand, the straight right hand all night long was consistent, and it was like a spear. I mean, bang. You know, it makes me think about my brothers and sisters over across the pond. I miss you guys when I don't have a chance to talk about you or with you, about something going on across the pond. Um... You know, it makes me think about you guys with dots, where you just throw that perfect dot right into the center. Bang. Bullseye. And that's what to, that's exactly what Zolkov did. He threw that dot of a right hand straight in. And um, all night long, Tavasa did what he could to make it interesting, but he just couldn't really get into his punching range where he could create a slug out which he kind of needed, where he could land one of his big, powerful hooks. He landed one, if my memory serves me right, against Gon. Um, you know, uh, the the I think he landed one against Gon, who's a hell of a heavyweight, probably number one now behind John Jones or number two maybe. But he's very good striker, right? He lost to the great John Jones, but I believe that Tavasa, when he fought Gon, dropped Gon. With a with one shot, and then of course, Gan survived it and and got rid of him. Uh, as you said, it's kind of like Derek Lewis. You get him, or he gets you. Um, but Volkov showed all of his skills and dominated. And as you touched on, even taking Tavasa to the mat, eventually getting the submission. You, you just don't see too many guys that are six seven doing stuff like that. Very impressive performance to me uh, for Volkov. Yeah, excellent fight. Well, that brings us to the main. We touched on it earlier. Um, I had commented, um, I think I mentioned it to you and Rob, but I know I mentioned to a couple people that he, for me, prior to the fight, I thought Strickland looked very uncomfortable in the pressers. Now, obviously, I'm completely wrong, right? I'm not trying to shoot myself in the foot. But as is the common theme on this podcast, we try to be as honest as possible. I thought this was going to be a walkover. I thought Izzy was going to kill him. I thought Sean looked so uncomfortable. I never say f afraid because Sean Strickland's a killer. But he looked out of character a little bit. Well... That must be his demeanor when he's ready to put on a hell of a performance because for me, he actually fought the best f game plan, fight plan I've ever seen him have. He just, 
he seemed to do everything right. Had Izzy going backwards and and seemed to keep him off balance all night, at least from my untrained eye. But I'm dying to hear what you think. He seen, It seemed to me like every time t Izzy would start to get set, Sean would keep moving. I think he could have used a little bit more feints to stay a little bit busier, but I'm dying to hear what you think on this one. New champ, uh, Sean Strickland takes the belt off Izzy. What'd you think? I, to your point, I don't disagree completely. See, I've been in this business 50 years. I thought he did look a little uncomfortable, but of course, all that matters is what you do, not how you feel. You know, yeah. like Customato's that great saying, what's the difference between a hero and a coward in a war? Uh, the only difference is in what they do. They both feel nervous. They both feel obviously scared, apprehensive, um, concerned. But the hero has the discipline to do what the coward didn't do. All that matters is what you do, not how you feel. And again, that's all that matters professionally in anything you do. And whatever it is that's your craft, that your profession, that no matter how you feel, that day, the night before, whatever, you don't have to be in a ring fighting. All that matters is what you do. And Strickland had the discipline to do it. Now, to your point, the reason I jumped on this is because I thought he was a little bit like those sponge figurines that I get from my grandkids. When they take a bath, you, they're real little, and you throw them in the bathtub, and they, they blow up. All of a sudden, they get bigger. I thought, to a little bit of what you're touching on, that Strickland blew up as the fight went on, his confidence. That I don't know where he was completely going in, but he grew. And part of why he grew was either as he wasn't himself or just strictly what Strickland was doing, took it away from him. Or a combination. <laughs> but he grew. And if Strickland, if Izzy could have done one thing a little more, and it's easy for me to say, just little busier and then yes Strickland's defense was good but not impenetrable impenetrable but where well, you couldn't penetrate it but if you throw one or two shots at him then his defense is hard to penetrate his defense was really good like his offense but but just simple, Strickland's. Very simple. His offense was use the jab, press behind the jab, put bugs on the windshield of the other guy so he doesn't see you coming, so he can't time you, his vision ain't good. Use the jab to set the table for the right hand to eat. Use the jab so you don't get out of position. You don't reach in. You don't give counter opportunities. You don't make mistakes. Very basic, very conventional. Like a boxer. Yeah, like a buttoned-up conventional boxer. Where he, that's what he did. And his defense, just as simple. Step out of range. Just enough to make a miss, and then un close enough to come back with the jab so he doesn't get anything started. So you don't let him get a rhythm going. You don't let Izzy get a rhythm going. You don't let him get himself together. And, and that's what he did. Stepped out of range, controlled range, Understood distance beautifully, and he blocked. He didn't move his head. He blocked with with that concocted look in the hand here, hand over there. You know that looked a little awkward, but it was effective. Awkwardly effective, awkwardly clever. Where it did the job. Now, uh, to finish on what I said, Evizi, the one thing he could have done with that. Defense put a little bit more hands together. It kind of fell into what Strickland wanted by throwing one, two shots. If When a guy's doing this and blocking, what you want to do in my world, for me, the way I teach, you want to put punches together on him when you can because you want him to handcuff himself where he's busy blocking 
And he'll block one or two, there's no doubt. And he did. But then if you put the third and the fourth there, it's hard to block all of them. It's hard to block them all. And Izzy didn't put him in that predicament. That was one of the, if I'm going X's and O's, that's one of the X's I would touch on. And I was with the great Rashad Evans and Din Thomas, two MMA experts, UFC experts. And all night they kept saying, where's the third punch? And they were right. Now, part of it was maybe Izzy wasn't right. Maybe he didn't have the confidence to do it because they weren't getting through. And he didn't want to leave himself open. We don't know what's going on in his mind. I could guess at some of that. But what we do know is that third punch never came. Or the fourth, obviously. So, I thought that before the fight, I said it early when we started this show, that there was more to Strickland. He made a transition. He changed over the last few years. He was more responsible, more buttoned up, you know, more of a patented boxer of a guy that, again, just just good fundamentals. And he came with good fundamentals. Not the knee up. Not the neon stuff, just reliable, dependable, consistent, technique, you know, crossed his T's, dotted his I's with the technique. That, that is valuable. Sometimes that's just as important, sometimes more important than just a pure talent. Sometimes you can beat better talent than yourself with better talent than yourself with just that. Go ahead, Ken, I'm sorry. One of the things that we always talk about on this show is the fact that UFC fighters, MMA fighters in general, is they're not so desperate to cling on to the undefeated record. Of course, they all want to be undefeated, but they're not afraid, either the organization or the fighters, not afraid to put them into deeper waters and progressively step them up and challenge. Maybe that knockout loss to Alex Perea taught Sean some lessons that he was able to take and there's no doubt that he did to take into the Izzy fight and that loss against Perea actually made him better to what to the point that you always make sometimes you learn more from the losses than the wins and maybe he buttoned up the defense because that loss was what a lot of people were predicating their predic prediction of Izzy by knockout in this fight including myself well he obviously learned some lessons there and wasn't making the same mistake he wasn't going to be reckless here and he fought like a perfect fight to do what he had to do yeah no it's a it's a true good point no doubt a good point uh you know you gotta lose to win somewhere in your life you know in some dimensions to 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 learn what it takes to win and so to that point, I always preach that or talk that or explain that as a teacher because a trainer is supposed to be a teacher more than just a coach. Um, so, yeah. But also to that point, Pereira moved his hands and his feet more. Um, as he didn't do enough of that, Pereira really created more, if not havoc, um, more problems by moving his hands more where is he again was more into one or two shots allowing that defense to be productive or to be what it was that was part of it but um, first round so important especially for a guy who's a big underdog and he wins the first round and it didn't look like all the lights were on in the house of Izzy. You know, you go by a house and you say, gee, not, it don't look like anyone's home. All the lights aren't on. It just didn't feel like all the lights were on. And I'm making no excuse because I don't want to take nothing away from Strickland. I'm just doing my job to point out that to me, to my eye, it just didn't look like, you know, the same... I don't want to say animated, but electric sort of Izzy that you usually come and expect to see in certain ways. You, you just... And look, Izzy changed, just like I said, Strickland's changed. He's changed over the last year or two. He has. He's not quite uh, as Bruce Lee-like as he was where he's doing all those 
extra things in the octagon where, you know, he's his music is toned down a little bit. He's become, I'm not saying subdued, but a little bit more flat-footed, uh, a, a little bit more, is it fair to say conventional, um, where before you saw the unconventional. You saw, you know, that neon talent used in the only way that neon talent really can show that it's neon talent in a in a different sort of way and in a less conventional way that's how you use neon talent and usually in a less conventional way i think you haven't you've seen him become again a little bit more settled down um you know and 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 part of that maybe with age you know he's 34 i think 35 years old now part of it with you know, because you're an older guy that depends on reflexes, like a Roy Jones. You depend on reflexes. You depend on timing. You depend on speed. As you get older, that slows down a little bit, and you start becoming a little bit more standard, conventional, human, yeah, with the humans, so to speak. You know what I mean? And uh, I think some of that's, taking place i think that's fair at least for me and something to be said about that when you depend on those talents ken and you do start to slow down which time does for all of us right and and the reflex are a little slower timing's a little less what can show up is the gaps of not having technique then if you don't have technique and you don't have the other things you can pay a price you can become, again, closer to the guy that doesn't have as much ability but has technique. And I think that's fair. Strickland never had that kind of talent in his life. But he's developed good technique. And he got in there with a guy who's always had more talent, but now his talent maybe, maybe has dissipated a little. Maybe part of it's emotional. Maybe part of it is what I said earlier. He was in the sandwich game where he was coming off such a high, knocking out in a rematch, Pereira, that he wasn't all there. That's why the lights weren't on. The generator wasn't, you know, ramping up the way it normally does because he had an emotional low. I think that was part of it, I'll be honest. But I think the other part is fair to point out too, that when you're the guy that is more talented than anyone else in the room, and suddenly that talent's not showing itself at the same level or as dependable on as it used to be, now you need technique. Now missing technique can show up. It can show up as, you know, as a shortcoming for you where, you know, you didn't need the technique because you had the talent. And I think part of that was shown a little bit, but I think the emotional part was there too. Dana White made a comment that I thought was interesting where he said they were talking about what's next. And he said, maybe a rematch. Nobody was thinking that at the moment. And he said, even though we always rematch, rematch, rematch. But people were thinking more of, you know, more of guys, I think, like um, Duplessis, um, where, you know, it was supposed to be him, and he's an unbelievable talent, big, strong, uh, incredible performance against Whitaker, uh, you know, and, and he's good. He's technically good. He's smart. He's not just big and strong. I was very impressed, and I met him after the fight. He talked to me for a while. Very impressed. Uh, I really was very impressed with the blessings. But then the other names, Kazat Shemaev, uh, he's fighting Paulo Costa. If Shemaev was to get a, you know, super impressive uh, win and kind of blow it out of the water against Costa, a very tough opponent, all of a sudden his name's in the mix. But interestingly, the boss 
said no. Maybe he didn't say no, but he just said maybe the rematch if he wants it. Is he because? And and he brought up the point I'm bringing up. He said he just came off an emotional high in beating Pereira and beating him the way that he did. And now he may not have been basically right. So he's he's thinking the same thing that I was thinking. And I don't know if it's going to be that. For me, as a trainer, if you ask me what, and they're not going to ask me because he's got good people around him, like Eugene, who's a tremendous trainer, tremendous human being. But for me, I might want to just give him some time off. I want to. I might want to just give him some time off. He's still going to get this shot. He get it, um, but give him some time off, physically, mentally, emotionally. You know, he's been very active. Like I said, he's gone. He's gone to the. He's gone to Mount Everest. When you come off Mount Everest, you know what? You you need to give your lungs a chance to to kind of stabilize. You know, you really. You you really do. Your mind, everything. Uh, you you got to give yourself a chance to kind of settle in again. And maybe he needs that. Um, I'll go through the breakdown real quick as far as first round. Very important when you're an underdog to have a good first round, build confidence, bang, right out of the shoot. What does Strickland do? He wins the first round. Um and the funny thing is, even watching it, we were waiting for the other shoe to drop. We were like, eh, it don't matter. Is he get it going now? Right? Didn't you think that way, Ken? Like, it don't matter. Definitely. Is he going to get it going now? And then the next one, eh, is he going to get it? And then finally we got to a point, is he ain't getting it going. <laughs> that's exactly right I was like man he's letting this get pretty far along like one of the things O'Malley mentioned is I don't worry about rounds I'm just trying to win the fight and and I was like all right man whenever you're ready let's get it going and come the fourth round you're like dude now you have to knock him out and I don't see anything to indicate that you're going to get to him the way you've been it's been going interesting interesting uh, very and so first round okay Strickland second round is he uh he wins the round for me, because of his length and his speed. Um, so he wins it. But then Strickland wins every other round. He he wins the third, the fourth, and the fifth. And again, not just shot, not just an upset that he won, but that he won in such a dominant way. Um, and, you know, again, I'll repeat what I said early. When I tweeted out with my the best tweeting team in the world, right? <laughs> Rob, Rob <laughs> the best. Brennan, Ian, all those guys, thank you. Always thank you. Even when I don't say it, I'm saying it. I'm thinking it. Um, funny thing, when I tweeted this out, I, I said it at the top. I thought back to the other day when, and like you say, you know, sometimes Strickland says these nutty things. And uh, I was thinking, people were saying he's crazy. I was, he's crazy like a fox. So, <laughs> you know. know, I mean. I like that. Yeah, at the, look, at the end of the day, um, we'll see what's next for, for Izzy. I know I wish him, and you do. He's been on the show a couple of times. Uh, nothing but well. Uh, him, oh, he's one of our favorite people. Yeah, Consider know. him like uh, like Pori, another member yeah. of the broadcast he, team. He's once, a champion. Certain guys come here enough. Yeah, when the you're best. a champion, that that doesn't go away because that goes beyond talent, physical talent. That goes to character. That goes to you know those kind of substances. And so he he's got that. So you know, at the end of the day, obviously um, he'll be fine. Um, I. As far as Strickland now, you know what he, what he, what he does next, um, you know whether it's a rematch or not. If it is a rematch, and like I said already, I thought that maybe he should take some rest. But if it was a rematch, because it could go either way, um, Strickland, you know, can do what I always talk about. The old timers said. He improves 30% with the title as Leon Edwards did with another superstar at the time, 
right? Uh, he did it with Usman. Um, Edwards did, and he's great. He's been on our show. You got to love that guy, his temperament, everything about him. Uh, uh, you know, he did it with Usman after he upset Usman in that title fight. Uh, he got better. He In the rematch, you saw it. He did improve, whether it was 30% or 25 whatever, but he did get better. Um, or it could go where is he, you know, corrects the mistakes and revigorates himself uh, with this challenge, you know, to get his title back the same way he did with Pereira, you know, that, that he took after that. Um, so, you know, uh, to... And, and to, I think to elaborate on the comment that Dana White made saying is he deserved a rematch and talking of a scenario where mostly after the Pereira fight where is he won back his title that is he may have mostly not been quite right. Um, the way I said it, and maybe this is the right word for terminology, he may have looked a little drained. And I don't mean drained necessarily physically, but emotionally. Um, you know, and again, taking nothing away from Strickland, who was 100% prepared uh, for the opportunity, took the title, um, you know. But with, again, whether it's in combat sports or boxing or football, uh, you know, I said it before, like my son would always say, those sandwich games, those sandwich fights, uh, <laughs> they 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 can give you indigestion. Put it that way. Um, so I guess uh, I guess everybody will be wondering what's next. Uh, I thought both men. I wanted to I wanted to say that uh, both men handled themselves. I thought. Very well. I don't care what Strickland said before and what he says. Some I get it, but as far as now and at that moment, I thought both men handled themselves very well and classy. Uh, after Izzy for you know in defeat, even though he didn't want to be there, he showed up at the post-fight press conference. Uh, he was gracious. He was a little, you know. He got out of there. He didn't. He didn't stay a long time, but he showed up, and he was gracious. And Strickland, he behaved not only in the octagon like a champion, but he behaved like a champion right afterwards by sending a beautiful message to all people to basically have a dream, no matter where you come from or that you what you've been through in life. Have a dream and work hard. Don't believe what you may hear others say to knock you. You know, he's he's been, he has said himself, he'd say, I, I was like nothing. Um, and he didn't think nothing of himself uh, at that time. And he said, you know, basically, don't listen to what others say to knock you. Believe what you hear inside of yourself, in your heart, and go out there and allow yourself to prove people wrong and and yourself right. And he was so he was just so gracious and right when he said that this belt that I hold right now doesn't define me and who I am. What I do does and what I believe does. Uh, as great as all these fighters are and the champions they are, it's when they take the time to help make others better. That's when they're really at their greatest, as far as I'm concerned. And Strickland gave credit to MMA for giving him a purpose and direction he otherwise would never have had. I've seen boxing do the same thing. Uh, and, and it's to save... I've seen boxing save lives, quite frankly. And Strickland said it. MMA saved my life. I've, like I said, I've seen it in boxing where it takes kids with nothing inside of them other than sometimes, quite frankly, um, doubt and sometimes hate, even hate for themselves. And it gives them direction, purpose, uh, a, a reason to like themselves 
and even feel proud of themselves and confidence that they can be something other than, as Strickland said, nothing. Because that's how many of these, these lost kids feel in their environment, that they have nothing, that they don't count. And boxing, MMA, other sports can make them realize that they do count, that they can like themselves and even depend on themselves. It allows these kids to have a chance to be what they were supposed to be, counted, successful, and good people, winners. Um, I, I just wanted to finish with that. Uh, the, the thing I add to it, it's the exact reason why my charity foundation for 10 years funded three boxing gyms in at-risk areas, tough areas, where sometimes there's not enough fathers, um, but beautiful people, needy people, people that deserve to, to get help in those kind of ways. Um, even smart kids that some people think they're not smart, but they're brilliant. And how do I know that? Because when I opened these gyms up and we funded them, the foundation funded them for 10 years at a cost of about 100000 a year. And we stopped after 10 years. Uh, I thought we did our share. But we... The reason I say they're brilliant, where a lot of these kids didn't go to school, they fell out of school, they quit school. Uh, so Teddy, how are you saying they're smart? Because when we put forward the way we did boxing, where we had, I created three rules in those gyms. One, you had to bring a report card to get in. No, no charge, we paid for everything. Two, you had to pull your pants up. No sagging. Sign right up there. No problem. Sign. No sagging. Respect yourself and respect others. And if you don't understand how maybe you're not respecting someone else, you know, sometimes I say to a kid, um, how would you feel if uh, somebody came here with their backside showing in front of your mother or sister? I, I wouldn't let that happen. Well, then don't be letting it happen. <laughs> don't be letting it happen with yourself. And the fighters, the kids... The older ones, they would be right in line with that message because they understood. Right in line with the younger kids. Yeah, you can't do that. Come on, you got to get better, son. So, and the third rule was my foundation paid a little extra money for a certified teacher to be there five days a week where you had to go into the computer room, a little tiny room, where you got tutored. And you had to go in there one day a week to make sure you're doing okay in school. If you didn't, you couldn't come in the gym. That was the carrot. And that's why I say we found out how smart they were. Because the, the marks went up. All of a sudden, they became smarter. Boxing made them smarter? I don't think so. I don't think so. What made them smarter, Teddy? Interest. That boxing gave them a reason to take interest in something they had no interest in before. And I think these are the programs that should be run in our cities now. Programs like that, instead of spending zillions of dollars and nothing gets done. Nothing gets helped. You still got the same damn problems. So anyway, I'm not patting myself on the back. We don't do it no more. Uh, but we did our share. I'm, I'm, we didn't do any more than other people do. We, we did our part. Uh, and there's plenty of good places out there that do great things. But... For, for me, the greatest success, we, we had world champions come out of those gyms. We had Olympians. We had, I don't know, hundreds of gold glove champions that came out of that gym, those gyms. But that was, for me, that wasn't a success. I'll be honest. I've been blessed. I've had a few champs. I've been lucky. That wasn't a success. You know what's a success? I'm going to mention two. And that's the importance of what I'm talking about why boxing is important, why MMA is important, why these things are important for these kids. We had a girl that was living in a car in Brooklyn with her mother. You know where she is now, Ken? Where? The United States Navy. Wow. That's, the, that's it right there. I almost get emotional as I talk about it. That's it right there. That's it right there. 
We had a, also had another beautiful kid. I think he was about 14 years old, 15 years old. And he was, you know, a lot of these kids had no fathers, nothing. But this kid had a family, a beautiful family. Goes to show you that it could come anywhere. And he was hanging out with idiots out in the street. They call themselves whatever, gangbangers, whatever the freak. Hanging out. And he was, from what I was explained at the time, he was living that life and drinking a bottle of vodka a day. Can you imagine? 15 years old. No. And, you know, the family threw him out. Good family. They, they, they threw him out of the house. Came to the gym. He dropped out of school. Came to the gym. Back in school. Got his GED. Got a job. Boxed. Didn't become a world champion. But became a champion person. So that's... That, that, I wanted to finish with that. Um... That's what I liked about Sean Strickland the most. I can forgive a lot of things that, uh, you know, maybe he says a little whatever. But for me, that's what, he, that's what he represented to me when he won that title. And when he took the time to send out that message to other kids out there. To me, that's when he was the great. It wasn't in the, in the third and the fourth and the fifth round. It was right there that he was... He was a champion. Anyway, that's that's my take on it, kid. The last thing before we sign off, I can't believe we didn't touch on it. We had a lot of excitement today with the Strickland in it, with the <laughs> Strickland, sorry, with the uh, Sean O'Malley interview, which will be up Thursday. If you're listening, please tune in Thursday for the Sean O'Malley interview. It's excellent. Uh, but we didn't touch on before we sign off. NFL underway, college in full swing. Texas upsets Alabama. Patriots and the Giants get handed L's to start the week. So not the best week for us. But are you on the Jets now? The Jets might have something going with um, Aaron Rodgers tonight against Buffalo. Although I don't think Buffalo is the way you want to start the season. What do you think? I love Aaron Rodgers. I just love him. I love him. I do. I love him as a person, obviously, as a generational talent. Um, one of the greatest quarterbacks ever. Uh, but you know, at 40, what is he, 41, 42? You, you don't know. You, you just don't know. I mean, Tom Brady spoiled us all doing it to the degree that he did it at the level he did it to the age that he did it. But then it comes a time. You don't know when that time's going to come. I hope it don't come for a while for all the New York fans and for Aaron, because like I said, I appreciate Aaron Rodgers a lot, um, for the way he stands up for certain things. Um, you know, uh, things you touched on even earlier that that you know he wasn't afraid to say what he what he believed in even when he knew a certain sect of of society would go after him or whatever. So I appreciate that, um, and I appreciate him on the field. I think they're connected. I think when you're strong off the field and you have the strength to stand up for certain things that are not easy or convenient or comfortable, that you have the strength in the field or wherever it is that you happen to make a living um, that that same strength goes with you or doesn't go with you um, and it'll show up sooner or later in a good way or in a bad way but the only thing I can say about these poor New York Jet fans is that every year is their year until it's not I, I, I hope I hope I'm wrong I, I think of Mark Darrow one of my sons, uh, Anthony D'Angelo, my son's best friends, couple of his best friends um, since he was a kid. And Mark Darrow was one of those guys that, you know, he um, he's wearing green and jet stuff, you know, on Saturday. All right? <laughs> on Saturday. And his kids are wearing it to bed in pajamas. You know what I mean? And, they're, and it's always the year. It's always the year. My son is blessed. He has good kids. We're blessed because he's got good friends, I should say. So yeah, every year. It's, uh, and you know what? I hope that they don't break Mark Darrow and Anthony D'Angelo's heart again. Uh, <laughs> because I know that would upset my son. It would upset me a little bit. A little bit. Um, but Well, they're in tough this week. Buffalo, tough one to start. Yeah, this with. is their year. They're supposed to go all the way. Uh, but <laughs> my my son tells me that they got a really good defense. They got Aaron Rodgers, obviously. They got some good weapons. 
But the one thing that you got to be a little concerned about, that offensive line. That offensive line. You know, it's hard to believe that they wouldn't secure that offensive line. I guess they couldn't. But they wouldn't secure that offensive line if they could when you bring in a guy like Aaron Rodgers. You would think that, okay, let's secure the offensive line. Right? We're bringing Aaron Rodgers in. Um, You know, but uh, (laughs) we'll, we'll see. It'll be interesting. It, it, uh, the only saving grace, only saving grace tonight is that they're at home. Unfortunately, they're facing yeah, that's Buffalo a tough one. On Monday that's night, a football tough one. Gonna be a big My one. man, Crackman, is picking Buffalo. Crackman, Bill Crackenberger. If you guys don't know him, you know he's probably one of the best uh, sports uh, handicappers out there. Uh, you know, uh, he, he's he's. He's good at what he does. He's got a show. He's got a podcast. You know, he's in Vegas. He does that. Um, but uh, he likes Buffalo. I Buffalo my, minus two on the road. Yeah. Odds makers think these teams are pretty evenly matched. Minus two, usually three points is uh, what it you can't, get for being No matter what happens, it can't be as bad as what happened to the Giants yesterday. It can't. It, oh. Can't, oh my. it, can't, it can't be. They got Ooh. a you-know-what whooping. Jeez, that was humiliating. Hey, honestly, hey, what what those old times? Just, I used to get a kicker. They opened up a can of whoop. You know what on them? <laughs> oh, hey, they, they opened up a wow. can of whoop. Yeah, that's a rough way to start the season oh, for the team, especially for the coaches. I mean, wow, wow. The, uh, the the only time you want to see these is in the morning when you have eggs. Right? I mean, <laughs> for those not watching, I'm putting a zero. I'm putting a circle. A circle. Yeah. Circles. Yeah. Two eggs. Two eggs. Over easy, That's please. A tough one. These weren't even over easy. They yep. were they were poached. <laughs> uh, uh, yep. <laughs> no, no salt. salt. <laughs> Jeez. Tough one. Well, we're underway. It's going to be a slow couple weeks coming up, but at the end of the week, we'll be here every week per usual. At the end of the month, we got a big one, Canelo, Charlo. Um, that's going to be tough. For, that's going to we're, be we're going to get gonna... into it as it gets closer. we we'll set it up, but I'll tell you right now. Right now, my friend, good friend, greatest lawyer, one of the greatest in, in, in the world. He's a world court lawyer, um, Pedro Martinez Faga. I've talked about him before. He's already told me ahead of time. He says, I'm telling you now, I'm, I'm not saying that Canelo's going to lose. I'm picking him to win a split decision, but he's going to have a tough time. You know what? I agree with him. I think that it's going to be tougher than people think. Not because Charlo is, you know, he hasn't been active. Uh, that I'm not saying he's the unbeatable he's already lost it's the smaller man he's the smaller guy the smaller charlo that that he's fighting because the bigger charlo you know wasn't ready to fight yet um i not because of Char- but because charlo's good enough and and still young enough to be able to canelo who's a really good solid fighter no doubt about it i, I should call him more than that i guess but i think he's slipping I see Canelo mm. slipping. I saw it in his last fight. He's slipping. Mm. You know, it happens as you get older. And I think that it could be a more interesting fight, maybe because of that slippage. Um, I think it could be a little bit more interesting than people, than people think. I want to do one quick thing to finish up. Before you do that, let me just tell everyone, we will have a a fight plan for um, Charlo Canelo fight coming up. We'll put that fight plan up the Thursday before that uh, Canelo fight so everyone can tune in. We'll have a Canelo Charlo fight plan per usual. Teddy and I will be in the ring. We'll probably be down at the Trinity Boxing Club in New York City and... uh, Per usual, deliver the uh, the goods and tell everyone what they should be looking for from each guy. Those always are a, a big hit. All right, here comes my son-in-law and my best buddy in the whole world. I have a few best buddies. My little grandson, Teddy, in Vegas, and my granddaughter, Mara, and my new granddaughter, Adeline. But to close this big show, this has been a big show.
Big show. That's we had to fit. finish with a big star on this big show because we had a big show today. We're, we're talking about a big upset uh, with a fighter named Adesanya and everything else. But I figured no better way. Just got home from school. No better way to close the show than with my buddy who's the next superstar. See, we, we got an interview that's going up Thursday with O'Malley. O'Malley's the next superstar in MMA, in UFC. And I think you're the next superstar in the YouTube world. So, I I'm just want to ask... No, I'm the next superstar in, wrestle, in wrestling. In wrestling, okay. And YouTube. And YouTube. Wrestling, and he's been doing a lot of good wrestling, just like just like his cousin Teddy is in Vegas, doing a lot of good wrestling. They have wrestling matches, matter of fact, when they get together. But, let's get to your YouTube channel now, right now. And... I'm going to ask, we got great fans out there. They're the best. They're, they're, they're the best. I'm going to ask them, can you do me a little favor? And a favor for my buddy here. Can you subscribe to his YouTube channel? You know, can you, can you give us some of that? <laughs> can you give us a little of that love? Give, give a little love. So do you want to you wanna tell them a little something about your YouTube channel? Um. It's the name of it is Joseph and Mara. At 720. Joseph and Mara at 720. I don't, where'd that 720 number come from? My dad made it up. Oh, your dad made it, all right. What, what is that? It's just Mara. Oh, Joseph, but there's, there's a little thing here. That's an at, right? No, it's just, that's a two. That's a, oh, so it's 2720. Yeah. Okay, sorry. Uh, I, I had to prove once again, I'm not very sophisticated when it comes to technology and stuff. Can I put the headphones on? Yes, of course. Joseph and Mara, 2720. Okay, no, that's, that's the YouTube. That's his YouTube channel. Please subscribe. Come see. And he wants to talk to you real quick. Go ahead, buddy. What do you want to say to the people? Hey, Joseph, how you doing? Nice to see you. Nice to see you. Can you give them a quick example of what's on, what they're going to see on your YouTube? You're just starting to get going. You're just starting to get going. Uh, me at the bouncy house and me in the, the pool doing a pool workout. Uh, nice. Yeah. And... Uh, and me when I was for uh, cleaning the table. Nice. And then. Good job. And what about finding? What did you find yesterday? What did you dig up yesterday in a park? You went on a treasure hunt with your sister yesterday. And, and you. And we found thirty-six diamonds. Now, I don't nice. want everybody running to Staten Island now. <laughs> Calm down. I don't want everybody running over here, <laughs> Staten Island, looking for diamonds. We're, yeah. we're, because we're not going to tell them where that, where that locate. Don't give them the location. Because okay. we'll get too many people here. Yes. And then they'll take the dime. Then they'll step on the mushroom. Uh, and the, then there's no more diamonds. Nice. Yeah, there was, a, there was a magical mushroom in the woods where the diamonds were buried. It was an orange mushroom. And was, they spawned the diamonds. Means next time we go, there's going to be more diamonds. Yeah, we're, we're going to find more diamonds. But we got a lot of them uh, yesterday. Okay, yeah. you want to... You got anything <laughs> else to say? You want to say goodbye to everyone? Uh, no. Uh, well, say goodbye and say Bye. and say please come to my YouTube channel. Please come to my YouTube channel and subscribe. There it is. And like. <laughs> like and subscribe. And like. Gotcha. <laughs> okay. He like knows and more subscribe. Than his grandfather. <laughs> he knows how to say and like. Wow, that's that's pretty good. That's pretty good. All right. Well, that was a good one. That was thorough. We covered everything, including the YouTube channel. So, um, guys, thanks for being with us. Appreciate everyone as always. Please like and subscribe to the videos. It helps us a tremendous amount. And we'll be back next week. Thanks, Teddy. Thank you for enduring me. I appreciate this all. <laughs> it's all good. That's what we do. Have a good week, everyone. <laughs>